I've been hanging with Horace lately. He's been prepping to depart, but can still kick my ass at chess while he does paperwork. Horace just kind of multitasks small talk, writing missives and order forms and chess calls. He seems to have really lightened up around me. Always had a sense of worry. Or maybe he's just that good of an actor? He's a Primark after all. That is checkmate. Hi! I thought I actually had you. You played right into my trap. I expected you to move differently, but adjusted. I'm not very good at chess, so he likely expected me to play better. I bitch and moan a bit and jest. Finally decide to ask the question I have been holding on to. Where are you heading out to? I'm off to Nostramo. We believe we have narrowed down the sector and decided to score it for my brother. Makes sense. Conrad Kurz will need the most help after Angron. Are they both joining the Emperor or heading to Terra? Both. Gilliman as well will be joining you. What of Magnus? His situation is stable and he will be recovered on a more natural timetable. What is Terra like? When I was last there, it still had a blue sky. And humanity had first been to Luna two generations ago with Mars still but a dream. Horace raises his head from the papers, a depressed look in his eyes. It's a hive world now. Yeah, hive worlds are <laughs> fucking... Think of like a mega ghetto. <laughs> That's essentially what a hive world is, but the whole planet's a fucking ghetto. With all that comes with being the oldest. I knew that before, but it still kind of hurts. Like something is forever lost. I never drank in my former life, but to this I took a shot of Amasek. I saw Horace off as he and the Luna Wolves went to find his brother. I'm not supposed to, but I pray for the Legion's safety, that of Horace and Kurz. If Big E knows about it, he doesn't call me out on it. I'm currently in my dining room, eating a nice grok steak and not potato paste. Alright, whatever you say. <laughs> I had dismissed my servant staff for the night, rest cycle. My sleep patterns are likely ruined by the time cycle on ship and my random classes fit between Malco and Biggie's free time. Soon I am going to follow the Custodes to reintegrate a world passed over by the Crusade in favour of more vital targets. It is a quick territory grab on the way back to Terra. I am to follow the Big E's reps for the mission. Stay quiet and watch how it's done. If things go wrong, the Custodes are to bail us out before the army crushes the world. Hopefully it goes smoothly. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Hopefully. Hopefully, Hopefully and 40k just don't mix very well. Let's be serious, guys. It went well. The world was mostly civilised and only really fighting orcs near the poles and some mountain ranges. They welcomed the Imperium with open arms as long-lost brothers. Some custodies and army units were sent to help the local purge the poles. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Is that intended? <laughs> while Big E decided to personally, with his 300 companions, take over the mountain ranges just for fun. I tagged along for that, sort of. I watched it from a binocular range. It was fucking metal. <laughs> See, this is why... Fucking metal. metal. <laughs> no, this is exactly why it's a Flesh Prince. Yeah. Because like, this is what it, like this is just a sitcom to me. Yeah. It's like a weird sitcom set in 40K. <laughs> I don't know why. It's just... It, you it's, know it's bad, It's the but lingo you, that this guy uses. It's so funny. Yeah, it just doesn't, it just doesn't mesh. No, but, but it does. It kind of does at the same time, yeah. We stayed for a few weeks to help sort out integration and attend some balls at a few noble estates. I mostly kept quiet and poured wine for the Emperor. Got a job to do after all. Hey guys, sorry for the interruption, but a quick message from our sponsored affiliate with Amazon. So the basic concept of how this works is we get to recommend items from Amazon. And if you choose to buy anything, Amazon gives us a small percentage of each sale. It's a pretty solid win-win all around. You get stuff, we get a couple of pennies. There are no extra fees or anything like that. Just Amazon gives us a small percentage of each sale for sending you there. So go ahead and check the link below to your storefront and get everything you could possibly need for tabletop role-playing games through us. Thinking about getting a new battle map? Or been thinking about getting into a new system like Shadowrun or Call of Cthulhu? Get it through us. Now let's get back to the video. We enter Sol. It was amazing seeing the fleet and bases around Saturn. It was beautiful. Like seeing a polished sword arranged in an art piece. We passed by Mars. It was humbling to see the planets spanning factory cities and rails. It even had small seas. I don't remember reading about those. They must have been lost during the heresy. Luna was a bastion of war. Mighty cannon and shipyard everywhere. All proper settlement buried deep. It was utterly alien to the moon I knew. 
Terra was seemingly a single cityscape. Massive plates hovered above the world, the lights of the hives peaking above the smog, while the larger spires peeked through like islands. I had expected a bleak world, but on arrival of Terra, I noticed the massive artwork everywhere. Murals, statues of victory over all odds, and mankind's struggle. I was never an artist, or even appreciated art, but these were beyond my words. I was granted a tour over the Imperial Palace. I spent a week seeing the main sights of interest, but that barely allowed me to see much. I got to see the top of what was once the Himalayas, now a bastion of the Custodes. I needed an oxygen mask as the air was so thin. It all really hit home as to what I needed to help save. Disney is going to sue us. <laughs> what? I have no idea. I stand before a massive medical tank, straight out of Star Wars. Angron is inside with an air mask and various tubes hooked up to keep him alive. Big E and Malkador have been pulling shifts on stabilising Angorn's mind while his body healed. I don't understand what they are doing, but I think they are anchoring his mind or soul while his brain recovers. How does that even work? Yeah, it's better than what he was before anyway, yeah. so... I was eating lunch in the palace. Well, a garden area in the palace. Like a greenhouse, but as a park. Legos is standing a few paces away and I was told I have several more custodies guarding me, but I haven't seen them. I was chatting with some servant girl, but she seemed put off by Legos and guarded about me. I took that as a hint and backed off to eat in silence. I totally didn't sulk, honest. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> I turn around and see who else but Robo Girly Man. I'm not a psyker, but I guess. He raises an eyebrow at that. I offer him a seat at the table. No one else is in the garden eye besides us, and whatever custodies I don't know about. He gets closer, but stays standing. How do you know the future, then? He asks with a worry in his voice. That's classified. I say with a click of my tongue and a finger pistol. <laughs> That's classified. <laughs> G-Man is not amused. G-Man. <laughs> Father mentioned you managed to save my brother before the fleet reached me. That was your legion? I just provided the information. He grunts, clearly annoyed. What are you after? What? I'm just trying to help. He looks me right in the eye and exhales dramatically. I was expecting a scheming soothsayer. I must apologise. No harm done, man. Mine is a weird story. He finally sits, with his legs out as he's just too large for the table. Meant for us normies. <laughs> <laughs> We chatted for a bit about being far from home and on the home world of mankind, as well as the weirdness of it all. I later returned to my room in the Emperor's personal district and sulk about getting rejected by the cutest servant, by the cute servant girl. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, I was never popular with the ladies in this life or before. I guess some things just don't change. <laughs> this was a horrible idea. It sounded cool at first. Joining the soon-to-be Ultramarines on a bonding mission with their Primarch. Gulliman even was the one to ask me. How could I say no? Plus, it was a good way to get to know my new solar ox. I had been assigned a unit. Well, that unit was the remnants of a regiment that was being rewarded for surviving some apparently crazy shit. A few hundred men and their followers. Under a Colonel Razit Shaw, who was from Frank. They call themselves the Sunny Dogs. Okay then. <laughs> I had a fucking battalion assigned to me. What the fuck? So it was 300 Astartes from the 13th, their Primarch, me, and about 400-ish Solar Ox veterans going only a few levels into Terra Underhive. Should be a smooth, easy mission for G-Man to bond with some of his sons, and the Sunny Dogs to get used to me. And Legos, maybe. I haven't actually seen him yet. We aren't going deep, just the first two levels. Should be a cakewalk. I was riding on an armoured truck. One of many were granted for the mission. I was wearing carapace armour, painted gold and with a white chalice on each shoulder. Gotta let the enemy know I'm a unique unit. <laughs> the solars are kitted out the fuck. High-end armour, melt is, and the colonel has a Volkite gun. I have the armour my fancy bolt pistol, and a standard combat knife in bronze sheath for some reason. I only had two mags, so 16 shots. 
Hopefully, I don't need it. It starts out simple. We drive a few minutes. The boys clear out a camp of mutant gangers. Move on and repeat. It's a massacre. The gangers and mutants only have pipe weapons and spears at best. They don't stand a chance. As we are finishing the second level, things go to shit. A hive quack throws me to the bed of the truck. I hear the haunting groaning of metal and collapsing cement. I am thrown about the truck as it rolls around. There is weapons firing all around us. What the fuck is going on? I pick myself up. The truck is upside down. The four guards with me are dead from the fall or from the shattered glass ripping them up. Weapons fire is coming from all directions. I can barely get up. My left arm is fucked. Still there, but bloody as hell. I can move it, but it hurts like hell. I crawl out a busted window and see solar firing from the cover of ruined trucks and piled rubble. A few marines here and there. A solar spots me and drags me to cover, yelling at me to stay down. I follow his advice. He is a veteran and should know what to do. I am trying not to panic. I just lay there and try not to get in their way. Shit is going down. I see a marine with a fet pack fly over us and then hear the revving of what I assume to be a chainsword tearing apart some gangers. Up and move! Orders from the sergeant of the group that find me. I'm dragged up and we start running to some other cover. I run looking complex. I see Gulliman and his sons fighting some trash mechs. The Primarch drives a blade through a pilot while blasting some with his bolter. A sunny dog forces me down to the ground. VIP moved, throw him! Moving as one, every dog throws what I assume is a grenade into the wave of gangers. Guess they weren't worried about harming the fully armoured marines. Explosions wipe out most of the enemy. and The marines don't even flinch and mop up the rest as Solar's assist. Without missing a beat, the remaining dogs rush the complex and start digging in. Windows are cleared, rooms swept for hostiles and bastions established. Raza is pissed, but professional. He is yelling out orders left and right. One squad is setting up a vox link. I get dragged into a more secure room with a medic to patch me and some of the wounded up. I lean against the wall trying to make room for more of the wounded to lay down. I am handed a canteen and take a drink. What the fuck was all that? I can still hear firing outside, but it is less and less often. I am in the fetal position now, trying desperately not to break down. The last thing the solars need is me having a breakdown. I just try and breathe and wait for instructions. We are on Terra. We can't have fallen too far into the Underhive. We should be fine. We have some of the Imperium's finest soldiers and a fucking Primark. After a while, a sunny dog medic hands me another canteen and a ration pack. Eat as we walk. Lord Gulliman wants to speak to you. We walk to what appears to be a storage room. Gulliman is talking to Razet. They both pause and look at us as we walk in. G-Man nods and speaks first. I was hoping you could explain something for us. The gangers have strange markings on them. Could you examine them for us? I guess. A marine walks in carrying a corpse. Throw him right in front of me. I see an eight-pointed star on his forehead, covered in gore. It was literally carved into his skull. It hurts my eyes and gives me a headache just looking at it. I pull my bolt pistol and fire at the corpse just to be safe. I think the recoil sprained my wrist. I drop the gun in pain. This startles the soldiers. Gulliman moves to restrain me, but he stops as I yell out. Burn the bodies, they might not be truly dead. Razit takes it in stride. You heard him. Burn the bodies. Groups of at least two while moving them. A sunny dog straps my pistol back in my holster. I nod and thank him. What was that? Gulliman is glaring me down, but not with hostile intent. He wants answers. The taint of the warp. They have moved against us. They have unnatural powers. Puppeting corpses is a favourite trick of theirs. I was just making sure. I am on the verge of breaking down. But I try and not make things worse. They are likely trying to remove me. No us from the Emperor's board. It's just made too much sense. But a cult on Terra? We were less than a day out. A few bodies did in fact get back up. But the soldiers were ready for it. A few more ganger bands tried to salvage for weapons and loot, but were quickly dealt with. Report spotted no weird star tattoos. I was glad for that. I am thinking this was an opportunity raid. A roll of the dice just because it was cheap. Razit thinks the cult placed charges when 
he heard about us passing through, hoping to loot better gear. He is likely half right, but I think they were sent after me and G-Man. I don't know how aware the ruinous powers are of me, but they surely see Gulliman, and I must clearly be on their radar. We received word from the local Hive government. They are sending help to retrieve us. Most of the gangers that are still trying to loot choose to die fighting rather than be captured, so interrogation isn't an option to learn about the cult. At least it seems we aren't being targeted by more cultists. Just the random gang here and there. We were camped down here for two days before the rescue teams arrived on some hover barge weapon platforms. I don't know what they're called. We board and get the hell out of Dodge. As we do so, the normie humans among us are handed gas masks. They have been ordered to vent super muster gas into the underhive once we are safe. Thankfully a sunny dog helps me with the mask as I had no idea how to put it on right. I hope any surviving cultists die in agony. They certainly had a coming. The ride back was awkward. Gulliman and Razit wanted answers. I kept telling them to wait. Razit eventually accepted he was going to need to wait till we were in a secure location. G-Man clearly thinks I'm trying to avoid telling him at all. I will tell you more once we're in with the Emperor. This isn't something we can talk about openly. Big E, if you're listening to my thoughts, please have some custodies waiting to get us right to you. Once we were back to the Hive proper, we were all given time to wash up and be interviewed on what happened. No, fuck that. I told the Hive forces this was now under the Emperor's personal control and to patch me into the Big E directly. They had the balls to laugh at me, until I realised the sunny dogs, marines and a fucking primarch were glaring them down. My post isn't meant to have any real power, but I'm hoping the Emperor doesn't mind me throwing his weight around right now. This needs to be handled carefully. I get a vid call right to Big E, with almost no wait time. The Hive Guard captain is freaking the fuck out. The great enemy has made a move. Say no more, I am on my way. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? Hold on, hold on. Let, me, let me just call the Emperor here real quick. I'm on my way. It's, it's like whenever, you know that me, it's like my mom and dad aren't home. I can't, I have cookies. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no, yeah. The Solars and Marines lock the guard station down. We order all the non-essential staff to leave. We're taking no chances. Luckily, we're not put under siege by chaos forces. Ems arrives with over 2,000 custodies to personally deal with this. I mentally explain what happened, and he asks Gulliman and boys to join him on the purge. The underhive is now being gassed and scorned by the custodies and marines. The sunny dogs, Legos and I, are still holed up in the seas guard station. A group of local noble reps tried to get us to leave. We tell them to fuck off, this is imperial business. <laughs> I love that shit. They start yelling about how the station is their house's property. I go out with the best armoured sunny dog and Legos as guards and personally tell them to fuck off or be declared traitors. The sight of a custody and my word sends them off. This is going to be a political shitstorm. I can already hear the nobles of this hive reeing for blood. <laughs> I hope Emps doesn't get swamped in paperwork for this. He might make me do it. <laughs> oh no. Malkador called me. He is handling the scandal that is forming. The Emperor mobilising the custodies has the higher ranking terror nobles on edge. I don't get the full issue, but the news of a Primarch being attacked is somehow already leaked. People are panicking. How did that even get out? Our mission was being treated as low-level standard purge of the nearer parts of the Underhive. A fairly frequent deployment. Anyway... Malco wants me to stay put until Emson's son returned to pick me up on the way. The problem is the mobs caused by the gassing of the underhive. Yeah, parts of the lower levels are getting the fumes or something. Riots have broken out in panic. We are right in the middle of it. We had some guard staff here, running equipment. They were searched thoroughly for chaos marks. Most complied without issue. Those that did had a melter put in their face and were told it was this or be thrown out. We had no takers on that offer. <laughs> yeah, I wonder why. <laughs> the Sunny Dogs looted some megaphones and were warning the rioters away. Those that don't comply are shot. Some of the guards we dismissed returned with their families to prevent a revolt from the guards already there. I allowed them in if they consented to the search. None were found. I looted a LAS pistol from the guard armory 
as I can't really use my bolt pistol. Oh, so it makes so much more yeah. sense. Also, a shotgun, but only have four shells as I give the guards and soldiers first dibs on ammo. I offered to take a shift on guard duty, but Razit threatened to tie me to a chair if I didn't stay in my secure room. Legos offered to help him. <laughs> Damn, I feel so useless. I help look after the guard staff's families with the other civilian staff members. There are two squads of sunny dogs with us, ten troopers. They refuse to allow the staffers to be armed. As I was resting, I get shaken awake. My brothers are coming to extract us. Be ready. It is Legos. Great, when are we out of here? How are we going to get everyone back to the palace? The sunny dogs are to stay here. They will be extracted later once the riots have stopped. We just can't leave. Lego grabs me by my neck and lifts me to his eye level. My duty is to protect you. I will not feel my master. I will drag your unconscious body back to the place if I must. Well, fuck me. Oh, <laughs> she. <laughs> we have to at least inform Razit. Fair enough. Lego puts me down. I yell to one squad to get Razit for me. All Razit asks for is an ETA. The Sunny Dogs are going to help clear the crowds for the Custodes airship to land, for Legos and I to be extracted. Thankfully, the Custodes are dropping off supplies for the siege, ammo and rations. This is at least something. I hate the idea of leaving here without everyone, but what can I even do? When this is over, I need to see about getting the Luther treatment. It will be hell, but I'm so sick of being just dead weight. Will that option even work for me though? Thoughts for later, gotta get prepped. We get Vox that the custodies are almost here. Legos and I move out to one of the doors. I can hear the craziness on the other side. I hold my shotgun tight and my armour feels heavier from the nerves. I hear grenades exploding, clearing the crowds, two dogs wish me luck and haul the doors open. And Lego and I run out. Well, I run. I see the gold and red ship above. Four custodies jump down in pairs. Each are carrying massive crates which they drop once on the ground. The custodies then draw their weapons and clear the riders further. This is slaughter, but I run to the ship now barely off the ground. I drop the shotgun as Legos grabs me and jumps aboard the ship. I look out the door of the ship as we speed away. I see the custodies cover the sunny dogs, pushing the crates to the station. Are the custodies staying with the sunny dogs? Legos pulls me away from the doors as they close. No. They will assist the Hive's troops re-establish order. That is overkill. How did things get this bad? This is madness. Riots in the lower levels of the Hive cities is fairly common. The local noble families are already mobilising their forces to crush the riot. What the fucking hell? This is beyond depressing. So much needless death. The speed of the ship is making me sick. Or at least, that's what I tell myself. We leave the Hive without further issue. Damn, I need a shower. Well, I have to say, that took a bit of a turn, did not it? Did it take a bit of a turn yeah, from the fucking nice, happy, joyous, happy-go-lucky one from the yeah, first one? Yeah, yeah, he definitely has changed. But then again, that's 40k for you. It's yeah. so miserable and so depressing. Like, it's kind of impossible for to give 40k a nice, happy, happy story. Like, yeah. like, you know, like, like the whole idea of, like, killing ladders um, in the lower yeah. hive, is, that's... that's that's a cheese day, mate. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, that happens all day, every day. Um, needless slaughter is par- part of the course, 40k, I suppose. Yeah. But, like, um, I know you guys waited a long time for this part, and, you know, it did take us a wee bit longer than usual. We'll try to keep to doing this story once a week, so we will, within reason. Yeah. Um, if we can. Um, there's two more parts it's currently letting, so hopefully the guy likes more. We'll just have to wait and see. But, like, I hope you guys enjoyed this. It's a bit weird, I know, and it's a bit unusual. Um. Yeah, I don't really know what to put on this. Be honest with you, a lot of yeah. people. A lot of people say it's like the McDonald's of forty k fan fiction. You know, it's not good for you, but you can't. Help but you can't help. It. But enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh. But like, I hope you guys have been enjoying this as much as we have. Uh. Remember, check out all the links down below. We're also on Spotify. Spotify. Check out on Spotify. Like, just check the links. Just look at the fucking description. Yeah. All right, guys. Just, just click on it. Also, really close to hundred thousand. So come on. E- on. Hit subscribe. Yeah, please. Anyway, like, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I will talk to you. Bye.